Today we want to talk about how Jesus won victories against the enemy. 2,000 years ago, Jesus hadn't begun his ministry. He'd just been baptized and he went into the wilderness, fasted for 40 days and experienced an incredible amount of temptation. And his ability to resist that temptation changed the history of the universe forever, changed the history of your destiny forever. He was victorious and we thank God for that. There's two parts of, of his victory. There's the boot camp and there's the battle. And so I just want us to see some truths from the life of Jesus that we can apply to our lives so that we can also live in his victory against the enemy and experience that victory in such a way as to positively impact many, many other people. Well, Jesus was prepared in a, in a season of boot camp. And I think we see some of that when we come to his baptism in Matthew chapter 3. Just this fact that he was willing to identify with us. He was willing to allow his cousin, John the baptizer, to baptize him, even though John said, no, 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 you're the, you're the one that should be baptizing me. He was humble. If you're going to experience victory against the enemy, it's done in humility. It's done in dependence upon God. It's done in dependence upon the prayers of others. You can't do it yourself. Satan is all about pride. He fell from heaven to uh, the position he's in now as a fallen, defeated angel because of his pride. So you need to develop a humility because God gives grace to the humble, but God resists the proud. You're not going to be able to resist the enemy if God's resisting you. You experience God's grace to experience victory through humility. The second thing Jesus had that he was uh, experiencing when he got baptized in his boot camp training uh, in preparation for major battle spiritual battle is the Holy Spirit of God descended upon him. He received the Holy Spirit. When you get saved, I believe the Holy Spirit does come into your life and, and he is your divine resident. And I want you to understand that the Holy Spirit in your life is the key to victory because greater is he, the Holy Spirit, who is in me than he, the enemy, the evil spirit, Who's in the world. You need to surrender your life to God. You need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You need to walk in the Spirit if you want to walk in victory. So you can every day so humble yourself before God. Surrender your life to God. Ask God to fill you with His Holy Spirit. And then you are prepared for whatever battle the enemy brings at you. So the enemy did bring battle to Jesus. He attacked him. It says that in, in Matthew 4, verse 1, he was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Into the wilderness. In the wilderness, was a, this word describes a very dark and dangerous place. Sometimes the Holy Spirit of God, as you're, you're walking with God, will lead you into situations that are dark and dangerous. But don't forget, he doesn't leave you there all by yourself. And the 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 story we read about is Satan coming to Jesus as Jesus is fasting for 40 days. We don't know if Satan just came at the end with these temptations or if he came every day with these temptations. I think it was repeated. He tempted him to, to turn the stones into bread to please his flesh. He tempted him to uh, have the angels pick, cap, catch him and protect him if he jumped off. Uh, the, the side of the temple. But the greatest temptation was that he would have all the kingdoms of the world. Satan is the God of this world. He would have all the kingdoms of this world if he would just bow down and worship Satan. That was the temptation. He could have the, the privilege without the cross. You know, Satan wants to give you an easy way out. And often that is the core of the temptation, is an easy way out. But Jesus did not sacrifice, thank God, 
what was right and only worshiping the Lord God and Him only. Jesus didn't bow down to Satan. He won. He was victorious. And uh, we thank God for that. Well, actually, His victory had several parts in it. One, He was denying Himself. He was fasting. He was in a place where He was more accessible and sensitive to the Spirit. If you've never practiced fasting, I encourage you to do so because it's a powerful spiritual weapon that is underused by most believers as we try to live in this battleground called earth and as we ex try to experience victory over the evil one. We should fast and pray for our family, our churches, and ourselves. Jesus quoted the scripture. How did Jesus defeat Satan every time he came with a temptation? Jesus said, it is written, it is written, it is written. Man, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. It is written, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. It is written, written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only will you serve. Him only will you worship. Jesus quoted the word of God. He knew the word of God. These are all verses from Deuteronomy. He, he memorized the law. As a rabbi, he would have memorized the first five books of the Bible. And as a national level a rabbi, he would have memorized large parts of the rest of the Old Testament. Jesus quoted the word of God. He denied himself and, and practiced fasting. He, he was not afraid to speak out the word of God against the enemy. And he persevered in this. It wasn't just one hour, it wasn't just one day, but he stayed with it for 40 days and 40 nights. And then it says that Satan left. Then the devil left. The devil left. The angels came. They took the ground. God came and, and uh, sanctified the place. And then we read in Luke's version of the story, Jesus then left in the power of the Holy Spirit. That victory not only prevented uh, the whole world from going under slavery to Satan, but it also put position Jesus in the power of the Holy Spirit, and then he began to do the miraculous things that we read about in the rest of the Gospels. You can walk in victory today. You can experience the victory of Christ. We have the same calling to resist the temptation of the enemy and be used of God to make a difference in the lives of other people. We have the same Holy Spirit in our life. We have the power to say no to sin and Satan. We have the power to say yes and to serve God. We've got to surrender our lives to the Spirit of God. We've got to take up our, our uh, authority in Christ. We've got to be strong in the Word of God, and we've got to resist the devil when temptation comes, speak the Word of God, and walk in victory. You can live in victory every day. Why don't you practice what Jesus did so that he could live in victory?